In this short video, we're going to use a previous case and we're going to create normalized variables from global variables. So first we're going to go to expressions and create a variable and we're going to call it CP rule. So CP rule is just going to be my coefficient of pressure, which I'm then later on going to change into a variable. So you see, we've taken the standard variable pressure with the units of Pascal, and then we're going to type half rho u squared. So my density is going to be 1.185 kilograms, excuse me, kilograms per meter cubed. And then just to be sure that this code's a bit more robust than it could otherwise be, I'm going to take an area average of the inlet velocity. So we can either um, type the function or we can have a little look and it will be there. So in that case it's going to be variable velocity at, so this is going to be a surface, so for example inlet. And then we want to square that. So that should be half rho area, area average to velocity at the inlet squared. And then we just close that bracket, hit apply, and then we get a variable here. We can then create a variable at the top, call it a CP rather than CP rule. We can then select it from here, our expression of CP rule, and we can have a little look at the global range. So here we've got a max CP of 1.05. We'd expect theoretically a value of 1, but this is sometimes what happens with CFD simulations. They can go much higher depending on mesh quality, but that's perfectly normal. And then we can go back into here. And we can start colouring this previous simulation that we did. Um, last week or the week before. We start with front, change that to CP, and we just use one and minus one as our um, ranging values. We just do it with this for all the cube surfaces. So I do get asked quite a lot, why do we bother using these normalized values rather than the overall static pressure value, for example? Well, normalizing makes the results a lot more general. So when we change between Reynolds numbers, i.e. increasing velocity, we can have our case more comparable to previous cases that have been performed. Same with normalizing velocity. Want to know how the velocity in the wake compares to the free stream velocity, so how much has it decreased by? It's a lot easier then to detect, for example, a change in reattachment point versus a previous or a different simulation. So there's various reasons why we do it. The more you do it, the more you'll kind of recognize the importance. If you're conducting academic reports, it's definitely important to keep them as these normalized variables. So speaking of velocity, we'll also do that. So create another expression, call it u raw. And then we'll just do the same. We'll take the velocity from the volume and we'll divide it by area. I can never remember how this is written, so I'm just gonna check up here, area av. And again, we're going to say velocity, which is a recognized variable. 
I'm going to type it as at inlet. So inlet there has got the capital letter. And just check that comes through okay. Again there, showing as a variable. So, so I'm going to call that capital U, which is normally the mean normalized velocity. And we could just select our Which is going to be euro to scalar because it's coming through as a velocity magnitude which is a scalar and then we can apply that if we want we can calculate the local range as well so you see you get an acceleration around the top of the cube about 1.3 times the free stream which is again a reason why we do this because it helps us recognize um, certain trends and behaviors especially if they're abnormal so plain color and change this. Look at our user specified. And there you go. So we can specify that to 1.3. And there you go. Yeah, the other joy of this, I suppose, is it does allow you to see where there are abnormalities in the simulation. So if I if the velocity, for example, was two times the free stream, I'd know there was something wrong. And I'd go looking for it. So yeah, that's how you normalize um, variables in ANSYS CFD post.